The third radiographic lecture in this week's module is Basic Chest Radiograph Interpretation. Advantages of chest x-rays include the fact that chest radiographs are two-dimensional images of three-dimensional structures compressed into one plane. Chest radiographs provide a look at the cardiac and thoracic structures of the patient, and when used in conjunction with the physical exam, they are a valuable assessment tool. Radiopaque is where a very dense object will block most of the x-ray beam and prevent it from reaching and reacting with the film. The image will be a light gray or a white. Translucent is when an object is not very dense and does not block a significant amount of the x-ray beam to react with the film. This image will be dark gray or black. These radiographs show the frontal view and the side view of the thoracic structures. Please note where everything is. Information obtained from chest x-rays include cardiothoracic ratios, which are normally 40 to 50 percent of the width of the chest, aortic arch-sidedness, right rather than the normal left, abdominal situs or transposition of the stomach and liver in the abdomen, lung fields comparing the right and the left, pulmonary vasculature to note for any opacification, consolidation, atelectasis, edema or hyperexpansion, and bony abnormalities such as abnormal or missing ribs, abnormal clavicles, or scoliosis. So who needs a chest x-ray? Each patient is different, so the practitioner must use the patient's history and physical exam findings to determine if an x-ray will add to the planned treatment or is required to confirm the diagnosis for the patient. Indications for chest x-ray in the pediatric patient include desaturation episodes, respiratory symptoms of distress, dysmorphic features, failure to thrive, ongoing evaluation of skeletal structures, cardiomegaly, situs and versus, and abdominal distension. An AP or anterior posterior film is obtained when the cassette is placed under the patient and the x-ray beam is directed from the front of the patient to the film, such as in a portable chest x-ray. This view tends to magnify anterior chest structures, including the heart. When the heart is being evaluated, it is important to know if the x-ray is being taken AP or PA. When a PA film is obtained, the heart being an anterior structure is closer to the imaging surface and thus is truer to its actual size. The x-ray beam enters the posterior position and exits anterior. The standard chest x-ray is usually done as a PA exposure. As discussed previously, alignment is very important. A patient should be in alignment and the clavicle should be of equal size and shape. The width of the intercostal spaces should be equal. Approaching a chest x-ray, ensure that it's the correct patient's x-ray you're reviewing. Is the film a good quality film? Is it a PA or an AP image? What information are you looking for? Note accessories including ECG leads, pacemakers, central lines, chest tubes, etc. Begin chest x-ray interpretation by developing a systematic method, starting with the top soft tissues of the chest wall and neck. Check for subcutaneous emphysema, possibly due to an air leak from a chest tube. You'll see air bubbles between the skin and the bony thorax. Examine the extrathoracic structures, observe for swelling of tissues. This chest x-ray shows subcutaneous air in the neck, axilla, and supraclavicular regions. When evaluating or reviewing a chest x-ray, start at the top and work your way down. Examine the clavicle, scapula, ribs, cervical, and thoracic vertebrae for fractures. Then note the presence of any hardware on the x-ray. 
If a patient had previous thoracic or cardiac surgery, you'll see sternal wires or surgical clips, and the appearance of the ribs may also be altered. Next, note any deformity of the chest. In infants, you'll see a round chest shape with horizontal ribs. This is an example of an x-ray which includes hardware or equipment from previous or recent procedures. Note the chest tube, ECG lead, and nasogastric tube. This is a lateral view of a patient with pectus escabatum. Note the concave appearance of the thoracic cavity. The diaphragm and areas below the diaphragm should be noted for clarity of the diaphragm. Check for unilateral elevation. The right diaphragm is normally slightly lower than the left diaphragm due to the location of the stomach. Unilateral elevation of the diaphragm may be due to cardiac surgery with phrenic nerve damage, atelectasis, or abdominal organ distension. Count the ribs on both sides to determine the severity. Bilateral elevation of the diaphragm is seen with hypoventilation, abdominal distension, obesity, or ascites. Now, if the diaphragm is not visible, the silhouette between the air density of the lungs and the tissue density of the diaphragm is obscured, the causes could be atelectasis or pleural fluid. The diaphragm will appear flattened bilaterally if a child is hyperventilating. It's important to note what side of the body the gastric bubble is on. It should be seen on the patient's left upper quadrant of the abdomen. A gastric bubble on the patient's right upper quadrant should be significant for the possibility of congenital malformations such as situs inversus or free air in the abdomen. Here's a chest x-ray with structures identified as a collarbone or clavicle, lung, spinal column, and the air bubble or gas in the stomach are on the left upper quadrant of the abdomen. This is an example of dextrocardia. The heart is reversed and is positioned on the right side of the chest. This particular patient also has situs inversa of the abdomen because their stomach bubble is also on the right side of the chest and the liver is on the left. Many cardiac defects can cause changes in the shape and musculature of the heart. These changes can be apparent on chest x-ray. One example is tetralogy of below. These patients are described as having a boot-shaped appearance of their cardiac silhouette. Here is an example of tetralogy of below and the boot-shaped appearance. This is an example of the snowman sign for total anomalous pulmonary venous return. Transposition of the great arteries is another common congenital heart defect and is described as a egg on a string on a chest x-ray. The pleura is a double layered serous membrane normally collapsed so the two layers cast a thin shadow. Costophrenic angle should be very sharp. Check for air or fluid between the pleural layers if they are not. Follow the pleura around the entire margin of the lung. A pneumothorax or air between the pleura will also lack pulmonary vascular margin. Bowing may be seen with a pneumothorax. This is a patient with a pneumothorax on their right side. This is a patient with a pneumothorax after chest tube removal. You can see the track left after the tube was removed is filled with air. This patient most likely had cardiac surgery. Note the sternal wires and pacing wires in the chest. Here's an example of a pneumothorax with an inspiratory and expiratory film. Notice how the pneumothorax gets relatively large in picture B, which is the expiratory film. This is an example of a normal chest x-ray. Try to identify as many structures as you can. The mediastinum consists of the trachea, two bronchi, esophagus, ascending aorta, aortic arch, pulmonary arteries, major veins, heart, and the thymus. The trachea should be a straight, dark, vertical, translucent column and should be located straight or just to the right of the patient's midline. 
The trachea may buckle to the right if a left aortic arch is present and may be displaced away from the pneumothorax. The trachea bifurcates at the level of the fourth rib called the carina. The aortic arch creates a knob or a curve just to the left of the patient's spine. If atelectasis occurs, the mediastinum may shift toward that atelectasis. If the significant pleural effusion occurs, the mediastinum may shift away from that area. The borders of the heart and aorta should be sharp. The center of the heart should lie under the lower one-third of the sternum. The cardiac shadow on an AP film is created largely by the shadow of the superior vena cava, right atrium, aortic knob, main pulmonary artery, left pulmonary artery, and left ventricle. The cardiothoracic ratio is normally 40 to 50 percent of the chest. Hypertrophy is the thickness of the chamber walls that is not seen on x-ray, whereas the cardiomegaly usually implies increased volume or dilatation. Normal positioning of the heart is in the left chest. Note if there is dextrocardia, the heart will sit in the right chest versus dextroposition, where the heart is pushed into the right chest by some type of pulmonary or traumatic event. Here is a picture of a pediatric x-ray with significant cardiomegaly. Here is an x-ray of an adult with cardiomegaly. Notice the prominent hyla or bat winging. They also have a pacemaker place. Always compare the left to the right lung field. The fibrous tissue of the normal lungs do not produce shadows. Some of the blood-filled arteries and veins will produce fluid density shadows. Note the presence or location of opacifications and be able to describe them. Look carefully for any air fluid levels. Remember the right lung is larger than the left. Air-filled bronchi are usually not visible on an AP chest x-ray. If the bronchi are visible, these are called air bronchograms and is usually visible on lateral films as a result of pneumonia, atelectasis, pulmonary edema, consolidation, infarction, and asthma. This is a chest x-ray indicative of airspace pneumonia and air bronchogram signs. Branching bronchi become visible with contrast because they're filled with fluid as in an airspace pneumonia. The hilum of the lungs contain the pulmonary artery and vein for each lung and the left and right bronchi. The left hilum is normally slightly higher than the right. Pulmonary vascular markings are usually visible in the proximal two-thirds of the lung field. Prominent but hazy vascular markings result from pulmonary edema or pulmonary venous congestion. This x-ray shows a right middle lobe and a right lower lobe pleural effusion in both the AP and the lateral films. 